Greetings, I am Herbert Erpaderp, and today I'm going to build a plane. Haven't done that for a while. This is the Hobby Boss Soviet 22 Bomber. Uh, don't you mean TU2? I said what I said. Anyway, this is a 72nd scale easy assembly kit. Inside the box we find two fuselage and wing parts, which I wasn't quite expecting. Not that this is a problem of course. Just most of the kits I've seen have these separate, but again, this is an easy assembly kit, and so much of the plane being in two parts does make things rather easy. The parts look good, though there are some nubbins on some flat surfaces that you'll have to remove. The detail looks reasonable. This is a cheap kit though, and unless you were unreasonable, you would expect it to be fairly basic, but it does look decent enough to me. The engine nacelles are also large single parts, which is fine, but it does mean that you've got no real choice but to model the plane with its gear down, unless you really want to do some plastic surgery. There's also a couple of sprues with detaily bits on them, and again, these parts look fine. Not hyper detailed or anything like that, but they're not bad. Obviously I'm no planeologist, so I would have no idea if these parts are especially realistic, but as I said, they look decent enough and they'll get the job done. The plastic is well moulded and neat looking, and while there are mould lines that you'll have to clean up, it's not too bad. Something this well made is almost a surprise in a kit as cheap as this one was, though a pleasant one to be sure. There are of course clear parts, because there's a fair bit of glass on this plane, and it looks pretty decent. You can see right through it. That is pretty much what you want in clear parts. Decals are also included, and these are mostly stars. I have no idea what that slogan says, probably something about beef stroganoff. The instructions are a nice colour leaflet. Well, the instructions themselves aren't in colour, but they're pretty clear and easy to understand and follow, especially if you pay attention to them. Why do you say that, Herbert? Oh, no reason. The back of the booklet has a nice colourful painting and marking guide. Very good, it's time to glue some bits of plastic together. I start with the cockpit interior, which is very simple. There's a pilot's seat, which gets glued into the floor part, and then in front of that there's a control stick. Joystick? Whatever you want to call it. So it's not really an impressive interior by any stretch, but again it is a very cheap, basic kit. I plan on painting the cockpit windows, so I don't really need the interior, but I figured this is a build video, why not show how it goes together. Here you can see some of those nubbins on the flat surfaces of the wing and on the fuselage that I mentioned before. I think these are just part of the plastic injection. These are fairly big parts, so it probably needed quite a few injection points to properly fill the mould. That's just my assumption anyway. They're not too difficult to remove, they're just in a kind of odd place compared to pretty much every other model I've built. Once they're removed, we can glue pretty much the entire plane together. Of course, if you are going to include the interior, you'll have to put that in before gluing the main parts together. The clear parts for the rear windows also need to be put in at this time. You can tell which part goes on which side by the shape of the windows. You'll probably know it if you do it wrong. Now the two halves of the pretty much entire plane go together. I glue this in a few sections just to make it a bit easier. Most of these areas did need a bit of pressure to avoid gaps, and it's not a perfect fit. There are still some gaps, some of which probably form panel lines. There were also some areas where there was a bit too much plastic, so I did a bit of scraping and sanding. It might need a bit more work and filling in some areas before it's ready for paint, but it looks good enough for now to continue with the build. I add the tail thingies, whatever these are called. These are easy enough to put on, just make sure they're sitting nice and vertical. There's a sort of almost flash looking protrusion on the left one of these, but looking at pictures it seems like it's meant to be there. I was initially tempted to remove that, but I'm glad I didn't. I attach the engine nacelles next. These seem to be identical, so it doesn't matter which side they go on. They go together just as easily as the fuselage halves did. Which is to say, you might need to apply a bit of pressure, and you may need to do some gap filling later, but it's rather easy. On top of the nacelle goes this little thing. I'm assuming this is an air intake of some sort, and it almost drops right into place. A little bit of pressure is all that was needed. On the underside we have what I think are exhausts. There's a left and right part for each engine, so don't make the horrendous mistake of mixing them up, or the exhaust police will find you. This is pretty simple, and that's why it looks simple. I then glue the forward canopy in place. 
Is it a canopy if it's multiple panes of glass? I don't know. Let's just call it the glass. I'm just using regular plastic cement here because I plan to paint the glass rather than make use of its clear properties. Obviously, if you do want the glass to be clear, you would paint the interior first and probably not use plastic cement. Some people use PVA glue, though you'll notice that most of the clear plastic here didn't fog up at all, though I do suspect it would have if I'd wanted it to remain clear. That's just how it works. The part does go into place really neatly. Next, I add this thing. I'm not really sure what it is, but it seems like it could be some kind of weird bomb side. It isn't hard to place, but it does make it a bit awkward to sit the plane upside down to work on the underside, such as when you're installing the landing gear, so it's probably worth leaving this off until later. At the back of the cockpit there's a gun. I'm pretty sure it's a gun. It isn't very well detailed at all, which isn't really surprising on a kit this cheap. It's fine. There's another gun in the canopy further back, and here we find Herbert making a mistake. Oh, big surprise there! I didn't realise I had the wrong part, and when it didn't fit, I just trimmed it so that it would fit into one of the two mounts. Horrible crime, I know, but if you rat me out to the cops, you're a dog, and I'll know. The canopy part does still go over the incorrect gun part, and I doubt anybody's going to notice in the end, so it doesn't really matter. And here's where I noticed the mistake I made. Obviously I was then forced to cut this gun so that it would fit in the wrong place too. The canopy goes over this part easily too, so no big deal. It would of course be easier if the correct parts were used in the right places, but sometimes that's just not possible. The lower front glass piece goes into place with no issue. I think it's looking pretty decent, though clearly there's going to have to be a bit more work done. I decided to build the engines next, because why not? I start by gluing the uh, cone part around the propeller part, and that's pretty simple. It is possible, if you want, to build this model with movable propellers. When you install the propellers in the engine part, there's a plastic ring that goes over the shaft. It's almost like a poly cap. You put that on the shaft of the propeller, and unless you've got really skinny fingers, you'll probably want to use some tweezers. And if you don't put too much glue on, the result should be propellers that rotate freely for untold hours of fun. I don't like fun, so I glue them solidly in place. Next, I assembled the landing gear. The struts needed a fair bit of cleanup, which was kind of annoying. The wheels can simply clip into those. You could have it so the wheels are free rolling, but there is a risk of making the glue god a bit unhappy, so I add glue. I then add this doodad, which is small and seems like it would be easy to break. Just don't break it, simple, and with that on it looks kind of landing gear. Initially I tried to glue that into place and then add the bracing, or whatever you would call it, but it is actually a lot easier to add the bracing thing to the strut and then glue that assembly into the landing gear well. It's a good idea to let these bond properly before putting the plane's weight on them. It's not that it's all that heavy, but it is heavy enough to force the gear out of position, which is not especially desirable. Next, I install the tail wheel, which is pretty easy. And that's our gear done. It's not possible to model this plane with the gear up unless you really want to do a bunch of plastic surgery. The final step is to add the engines. These just slide into place on the front of the nacelles like so. It was a slightly tight fit, but all you need to overcome that is a bit of pressure. Obviously the pressure should be applied to the engine and not the propellers. And that's it. The 72nd scale Tupolev 22, or if you want to be silly, TU2. That's not silly Herbert, that's correct! Whatever you choose to call it, the model is completed, and I'm pretty happy with it. I assume you can get more expensive, better detailed and higher quality models of this plane, but that might not be what you're after. Sometimes you just want something quick and fun to put together, and this is pretty much exactly that. As the box tells us, it's an easy assembly kit, and it lives up to that because it's very easy to assemble, and considering the low cost and simplicity of assembly, I would still say that it's a pretty nice model. It's not likely to win any competitions, and I'm pretty sure it gives rivet counters heart attacks, but if you just want a basic representation of a 2-2, I mean TU-2, it works just fine. You could use it as a background piece in a diorama or something like that. You might even be able to use it as a wargaming piece. I'm sure it's going to look a lot better once it's painted too. Don't you mean if it gets painted? 
If it gets painted, the lack of interior detail, in my opinion, makes it a good candidate for some fun canopy painting techniques. And if I do paint it, that's what I'll be doing, thus the clear parts have been glued into place already. I'm not saying that means I'll be painting it soon, but I have been thinking about it. Anyway, I might be waffling now. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to put them in the comment section below. Subscribe if you want to see more of this kind of thing. If you like what I do, feel free to support on Patreon or Coffee. You'll get to see videos early and things like that. Take care of yourselves, be excellent to each other, and thanks for watching. Farewell.